Paris, you know? Hello, so my name is Andres Susechi, and we're here at Comic-Con. Uh, we have a panel tomorrow on diversity and inclusion. Zig will be there to talk to us about, about it as well. And, uh, but we want to make sure that we speak out about the crisis that's going on right now with AI uh, maybe taking over uh, actors' jobs if we don't uh, take care of them. It's going to affect every industry. Um, so we also have Lindsay here who's going to tell us a little bit about it and about it in the world of uh, gaming and beyond. So uh, thank you much for coming and for talking yeah, to us. Thanks for having us. Um, and of course, as journalists, you understand the threat that AI poses to all of us. Um, but yeah, Zeke and I are both members of several of the sag actor negotiating committees. Um, we are both board members of the National Association for Voice Actors, which has been fighting uh, you know, with, on these issues for quite some time. Um, so one of the things that I think is very important about what you guys are doing uh, in reference to this is that AI has the potential to misuse and to mimic people's voices, not just for actors, but for the general population in general. So have you guys tried to um, think of or meet with any public officials to try to get laws passed in any states? Election. Um, so, like I've said previously, there, there are sort of three things that we need to get done for full protections in this area, and that's legislation, contracts, and understanding that there needs to be a transparency in technology. Uh, the legislative piece is really interesting because SAG-AFTRA has a legal team that is approaching this. Um, and they are reaching out, their government affairs folks are reaching out in the state of California, in the state of New York, anywhere that there's a sag after local office, and also to the federal government. And specifically, what they're working towards is a federal IP right um, in name and likeness. Right now, that right of publicity is state by state by state by state, and it's not a standard anywhere. But that is something that we think protects both us, but also the producers of content, to have it federally regulated that makes that a transferable right, so that we could be uh, paid, uh, get compensation for the use of our name and likeness, um, and also to be descendable, so that when a, an actor or a performer passes away, that right does not become fair use, but then goes to their heir and their estate, who can then determine how their name and likeness is used moving forward. For any voice actors out there now um, that may or may not be part of SAG or any unions, uh, if they come across their voice uh, being used in a way that they did not approve of. Do you have any suggestions on what they can do? Yeah, I would say first off, I mean, obviously all of us here are involved with the National Association of Voice Actors, and they are here to represent voice actors at any stage in their career, because obviously we all started non-union um, and worked our way up to where we had the opportunity to be union members. Um, we have the AI Writer on our website, which uh, quite a few of our members have um, been able to successfully uh, attach to their contracts. Um, we are putting together a kind of more generic takedown request that um, our members can use when they find their voices out there to submit and say, hey, you know, this is not something I approved, can you take it down? Um, so I would say that is going to be your best resource is, is the National Association of Voice Actors right now. And but I would caution that you need to be aware of the current state of play and that is copyright law, intellectual property, and right of publicity and privacy. The laws that currently exist on the books in America don't cover a lot of that. You can still have your voice, your face, your likeness taken by someone else and used um, in many different ways, um, covered by different laws that you don't consent to. And so that's why it's urgent at this time for us to go after legislative and contractual and technology solutions for this. If I may, uh, just listening to you guys earlier, I was struck by, um, the, the take that it's not us versus technology. We here all embrace technology. Um, I wanted to know, Sissy, you, yes, you're Sissy. working on a, on, on, on a way in which we, as filmmakers, for example, um, can include, include technology in a way that's ethical to the medium. Could you speak yes. a little bit about that for us? Uh, so as I mentioned, we are still in stealth. Um, so there's a lot that I can't talk about specifically. But the most important thing is that we are coming at it from an actor first perspective. We are coming at it from a way of using this technology in a way that benefits everybody, not just the person at the top, right? Um, I have a, a background in technology. I actually worked in the Silicon Valley for 10 years. And um, 
their whole philosophy is move fast and break things, right? Mm -hmm. So our job is to slow the tide a little bit and hold a space where we can set up a spot that it works um, instead of just ransacking the land, um, which is what we're really, really working towards. I'm hoping to have more details to, to divulge soon. Uh, we just have to get a few more things in place before I can speak publicly about it. We'll be happy to amplify it at that time when it is. And I think it's an important point to make that in all our industries, we want to do the same thing. We want to make sure that it's a human-centric uh, approach, that we embrace technology, but that the contracts are in place um, you know, at a federal level and all around so that every, it doesn't depend on the corporations, but it's a given that, that the artist comes first because it's, it's going to apply to all of society. It's going to affect yes. every single worker, as you eloquently have said before. So I think it's important that we draw this line in the sand now before it's yes. too late. Agreed. Agreed. Right. Can I go ahead and ask a question real quick, actually? Please. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and ask y'all. Um, Obviously, there has, for, for years and years, decades, there's been a lot of anti-union work, there's been disinformation campaigns, there's been tons and tons of work done by the government specifically to uh, sway distrust to unions and everything. What is the best uh, message that can be uh, sent out there to the normal person who has received this information for way too long that unions are bad? How, how, what do we tell those people? Can I? I'm just going to say something before I pass this to Zeke because he's much more eloquent than I. Look who is spending the most money at making the most noise. They have the most to lose. Unions are a democratic institution by design. There is the idea perpetuated out there that a union is like a corporate block with a bunch of uh, greedy and corrupt people siphoning off money from the poor workers. Really, who are the greedy and corrupt people siphoning off money from the poor workers? In a union, we have, I'll give you SAG after for an example. Our leaders are elected. They don't get paid. When I sat on the board of sag after it was a volunteer position. As a negotiator, we are volunteering. As a committee member at SAG, we are volunteers. Now, we do have a, pay, a paid staff. Uh, but it is a member-run union, and we decide, and we decide as union members with our vote what's important to us. So there is that narrative out there that, oh, unions are a bad thing. But if you look objectively at the numbers, union workers, not union actors or performers, union workers on average get paid more. Why? because they're able to bind together and use the leverage they have in their expertise to bargain for better terms, whereas a single individual is generally at the mercy of a giant corporation. Unions are a good thing, and we just need to educate people to understand that. And I'll say, if you look at the history of union organizing, you know, people, you love the bumper sticker that says, uh, you know, unions brought you the weekend. You know, they're the reason we have uh, limits on how many hours we can work in a day. There, we have limit. We have age limits on how old you can be when you work. You know, and now we're seeing in some states we're trying to see some of those child labor laws pulled back, which has been very upsetting to me personally. Um, yeah, it's like, wait, we want 13-year-olds working in factories again? Um, why we have safety standards? Why we have, you know, labor the national? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why we have Labor Day? But it's like, you know, we have all these protections in place in union shops because of unions. If you get hurt on the job, thank a union for getting you that disability pay. Um, and you know, when you see these right to work states, you know, they love that term right to work, but that is a misnomer. That is giving the employer all the power and taking away from the worker. And you know, make no mistakes, for those of us on the negotiating committee, it's us, the performers negotiating these contracts. Yes, we have staff assistance, but the staff comes back to us and say, here's what's on the table, and we talk amongst ourselves as non-paid members of this union to discuss what is best for us. Can I ask you a follow-up question to that? Just as a follow-up question to what you said, because it was something that really struck me as soon as you said it, can you please explain the concept of right to work to, let's say, to someone who's never heard or understood it before? Cool. Can you give that to me? Can you give that to Zeke? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> You can make it snappy. I might have to pass on that <laughs> one. I have opinions, but uh, I am not a labor lawyer. Um, again, I'm an actor, and I try my best to learn this because it's important for the future of the profession. Um, but we do know that there was a push in the 80s to develop this. Um, 
it's always interesting, and I'll sort of approach this tangentially. When you see something like Right to Work or Citizens United or people here for the goodness of the common man and all the persons, you really need to start to look at that. All right, because the name is basically telling you we're uh, a corporation behind this paying a lot of money to fool you into giving away your rights. Exactly. That's really what it comes down to. Very well said. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so, so much, much and enjoy the rest of the convention. Thanks for Thank having us. Well Thank, Thank you. Thank you guys so much for being here. Yeah. Um,